We now prove one very delicate implication in this chain of implications that we are proving. So we have an operator S. So what is S? S is an operator on an inner product space, finite dimensional inner product space V. And we know that there exists an orthonormal basis such that when you apply S to that orthonormal, orthonormal basis, the collection of vectors that you get is again orthonormal and we're going to prove that S is invertible uh, the inverse of S equals the adjoint of S. So how do we prove that? Well, the first part that S is invertible is rather easy so it follows from basic theory of linear maps if we remember from a long time ago S maps a basis does not even matter whether it's sort of orthonormal it maps a basis to a basis, so it's invertible, finished. And now, in order to proceed, we are going to prove some intermediate result, an intermediate property, which is the following, that follows from this, it maps some orthonormal basis to an orthonormal basis, and because of this, S preserves inner product. Okay? That's, what, that's what is written here, S preserves inner product. How do we prove that? Well, use the assumption. The assumption. Take E1, En as an orthonormal basis such that SE1, SEN is also orthonormal. Which, that's the assumption. And now, that's what we have to show. Well, write U as a linear combination of the basis and V as a linear combination of the basis. I use different indices because when we write them in the same formula, it's very inconvenient to use the same inde index because then it makes it life complicated when we want to use linearity, etc. Anyway, let's continue. What's the inner product of SU and SV? Well, substitute the formula for U, substitute the formula for V, use linearity or conjugate linearity, then these sums they go out of the inner product here and what we get is alpha j, beta j, bar and the sums appear here outside. Right. Then this is um, S is linear so S remains. So I'm omitting some steps here. Well actually S of u equal S of this sum but then S of this sum, this, this goes out of S and we are left with just S E J, which is what we have here. And S E K, which is what we have here. And now is when we use the assumption. What's the assumption? That the image of S is an orthonormal basis. So here we are computing the inner product between members of an orthonormal family. This inner product will be zero unless K equals J, in which case it will be one. So this summation here disappears, and here instead of k, we get j here. So we found an expression for SUSV. On the other hand, we're trying to show that SUSV equals UV, so let's expand UV. UV, U is this, V is this sum. We know the sum goes out of the inner, pro in the inner product. The number, the scalar, also goes out. Here this one goes out, but with complex conjugate. So we get this, and again, this inner product will be zero when j and k are different and one when they are equal. So this sum here disappears, and we are left with this. So it coincides, and this proves the claim. The claim is proved. Using this claim, we're going to show that the inverse of s is the adjoint of s. And just by checking the basic definition of what it means to be a joint. So, compute the inner product of V and S minus 1 W for any V and W chosen arbitrarily. Now that we know that S preserves inner product, we can take S here and here. So this becomes S V S S minus 1 W. Of course, S S minus 1 is the identity, so this is S V W. And again, if we forget what is in between and we just look at this equals this for every V and every W, this is exactly the definition of this being the adjoint. 
So S star equal S minus one. 